Welcome back to cardstock modeling, specifically for model trains. Uh, again, my name's Sam Miller, and I'm a newbie at this. I don't propose to be an expert, but I want to share with you my journey and with the hopes other people watch this, provide feedback with a lot of more information so we can all learn together as we make use of more time than we thought we'd ever have on our hands. Um, the first thing I want to talk about in this episode is um, materials and tools because that's the foundation of what everything you do. You're not going in this case, you can do uh, kit bashing or build from scratch, even using cardstock. And uh, because at this point in my life, which is the first time ever, I've never, I don't have a workbench. I don't have an area that I can create dirt and dust necessarily from uh, working with balsa wood and things like that. And I've got a limited area. In fact, I, I, because I enjoy time uh, spending with my family, I will even uh, do cutting and gluing while I'm binging on Netflix um, in front of the TV in a, a 30 by 20 tray, uh, which is kind of convenient, except don't spill coffee on what you're working on. <clears throat> so let's start. First, I'm, I'm taking a lot of the information that I've learned um, through uh, clever models. Uh, Tom and, uh, and Dave are fantastic folks. They've got, you know, decades of experience at doing this, and uh, they're not spring chickens. It's a passion for them, and it's a sideline, but they really are on fire for it and have been at it, I don't know, 15, 20 years online at least. So <clears throat> I'm taking from a, a PDF that they created, which there's a number of them in this area, and it's called Please Read This First. And then they provide that at their website and uh, it, with all their download designs, it a, it's accompanies that. And the first thing they, one of the first things they talk about is paper. Um, what you'll come to find in any of this, what I'm saying is not gospel, it's just what I've come to become familiar with. It works for me. Maybe there's better things, and hopefully I'll learn more to make, like make it easier and, and improve my skill sets and talent. Um, what I've come to use in terms of uh, um, a standard workhorse for most things to print uh, the finished product on is this is a 110 pound weight, which is 199 grams. And you'll find that you can look at two different pieces of paper that are the same pound weight, but the grams per meter square can vary. So it can be denser, whatever it is. This I bought at Walmart. It's a, a cardstock material. Uh, it costs about five or six dollars for 150 sheets, something like that. And it's pretty reasonable that I found. Uh, I'm trying to think what the product is. It's made for Walmart, but originally I found this stuff. And I thought it was uh, uh, it was a brand name paper, so the probability they would start private labeling. Here, there you go. That's just one thing taken from one of their projects, and this is called the the Silver City Tool Shop. And it's a free download. That's what's nice about Clever Models. Every so many hundred sales they have, they'll put out a nice um, free download. They call it their freebie section. And I'll show you the website and everything else. So that's what it looks like printed. You can get a feel for the rigidity and semi-flexibility of that. Now. When you want to uh, increase the strength of the walls, well, just be before going into that, this shows you 110 pound paper, and it is rated at 300 grams per square meter. And it's more rigid, it's a stiffer product, you see that. And I got this uh, at Michael's. Um, 
It's uh, their card stock, um, white recollections. This is a, a, a little bit of an off-white. And uh, they even, it even comes in a 65 pound weight, which is like 176 pounds. And it's, it's a little pricier. You get maybe 100 sheets for using their uh, 40 or 50% off coupons, which I never thought of being a guy. I go to Michael's um, or Hobby Lobby, and I do. And uh, I use the app on my phone, and you can get weekly discounts to use, and use those daily. So if you need to, uh, which isn't too bad. <clears throat> now, what I also use is to, to create a real good stiffener when you need to make walls and things like that, because uh, and if you don't want to use quarter-inch uh, uh, foam board, and that is something like this. The, uh, you, I found it, and it's, you can see it's much it's stiffer. Uh, it's about the consistency of a cereal box, and I don't like using cereal boxes. This stuff is better. Um, this comes in big sizes, but they'll cut it for you in anything. You go to your local print shop and say, say you want to feel what kind of card stock material they have. And for instance, like this, this was pretty reasonable at maybe 20 cents a sheet that they cut for me or something like that. So that's one thing I found too, that um, the price of, of downloading the design kits, I call them online, is very reasonable. And you can make multiple uh, buildings just by one investment for maybe somewhere uh, normally between 5 to $20. $20 is a real complex project. And lots of times you can get uh, consolidation of things and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's a lot less. So the... Um, You'll be using this, and, and one thing, if it's this stiff and you put a fold into it, sometimes you don't even have to use a gusset, which is basically putting a corner piece in there with flanges on it out of cardstock. So that gives you an idea of, of paper, something to, to use to uh, firm up the walls if you want. And this is, it's 3 16th inch, I believe, foam board. And I found, I've gone to the dollar store and got them for it a dollar a board, and I've gone to Dick Blick and paid a little, paid four dollars or so. I found it's worth getting the Elmers, for me. Uh, the quality and the density of the foam, and you can feel it by weight. They're heavier for three dollars for a sheet that's 24 inches by 30 inches or something like that. It's a pretty reasonable price. Uh, and you don't use tons of this stuff but it comes in handy when you can't get the rigidity from a stiffer piece of cardstock. Um, and what we do is when something like this, is most of the times I don't print on this. I have to, would have to cut it to size eight and a half by 11. And it depends upon the feed of your printer. If it's a back, a rear feed printer and takes it through and doesn't flip the paper over, you might be able to print on it. But otherwise, and I'll get into glues in a little bit, you take this, and most of the time I'll use just a stick glue. Right there, a stick glue. And I'll put it on, and I'll cut out the areas I need. Put it in here, use a roller, and put a little paperweight on, set it aside for 15 or 20 minutes at most, and you've got a much stiffer product. For, uh, as you can see, there's folds in here. Right here, there's folds, and I'll explain what that means a little bit later on, that you'll be folding and that becomes a corner to create a building. And like the corners in this building, for example. And on in this building, as you can see, I used a uh, foam board for stiffeners in some cases. So, like spaghetti sauce, there's all kinds out there. I stumbled onto this. There's probably others out there that have to research. This is clear film. And um, in this case, it says it's 0.007 and thickness is 8.5 by 11. I have not learned how to print on this yet. But uh, what I do is I'll use it for the, the pane in the windows. 
I, glued on the back of it. And we'll get into that when we get into windows. Many times you're going to need pens. And I call them markers. And I found that this Tom Bow, if you can see that clearly, marker right there, is, um, is nice because it has, it's dual tipped. A nice flexible tip on the one end and then you have more of a, a small traditional tip. And through working this tip, uh, you'll want to uh, provide colors and highlights. And I found also, uh, you go to Michael's, use your coupon, and this thing might normally run about $3.80 or something like that. You use a 40 cent coupon, get a pretty decent price on it. And then you can also, um, buy it in different shades or different uh, ranges of colors uh, like this and it's even less expensive. And I found out the ink volume inside of this stuff is pretty good. The other thing too is it's water-based. It's not alcohol-based. In the beginning, I didn't know the difference. And this tends to bleed less. You can control um, the shading of it and, it and its use because uh, we'll talk about it later is what you want to do is after you cut, you're going to need this to shade the edges um, by, by marking them. And as you can see, this is brown and then that's gray. And uh, you'll use pens for maybe filling, uh, scouring and then filling in gaps and things like that right there. So they really help in providing a, a weathering look, a realistic look, instead of something that's just a cookie cutter, um, takes away the plastic look anyway. There's no plastic here. Clever Brothers, uh, Clever Models, but they are brothers, um, they seem to prefer Epson. I've used Epson in my business in the past doing um, duplication of DVDs. And uh, in past life, I was a I still dabble into video production and editing. That's why I have the equipment here that I can talk to you pretty easily, I hope. I'm usually behind the camera. Um, what I have here is this is, I think, the uh, a Canon 8220 series. And you can get it somewhere in the $100 range. What I like about it, uh, this particular model, it has six colors six color uh, modules, and uh, you can get, um, we'll call it aftermarket, but good quality inks for about half the price if you go for brand name uh, Canon inks. And it's the same way with Epson. Next thing we'll go to is glues. And one of the things I've found too is if you find cases like this, I got, think I got this at Michael's, use the coupon, and you might get, uh, you get a, a large box that stores all these things organized. And for 15 bucks uh, sale price, you might get 20 or more of these small containers in that. So let's take a look at the different types of, uh, of glue we have here. Starting with the good old Elmer's, uh, I found it. It's a multi-purpose glue all. It works on wood, paper, and some other products too. And how I apply this is with this bottle. And I've got these on Amazon. You can get them probably 20 of them for eight to 10 bucks, and it's amazing. Um, and then to clean it, I'll use a, uh, keep this clean right up here, um, is I take a, um, a sewing needle and then put it in a, like a forcep tweezer and just clean it in and out. It's, I can refill this pretty easily. And with this, um, this spout, which this shows you the size, just using a ruler, what it is, that spout, you can run a bead line. You see this line right here? That's a thin line. I can bead that about that line very easily. You just get used to it. I never thought I would. Uh, sometimes it's like picking up a golf club for the first time, you feel like you got a snake in your hands. 
But uh, the more you do it, the more comfortable you feel, and the more you can start to work the tool and, and optimize uh, what you're doing with it. This stuff I also like, it, it tacks well quickly. It glues quickly. It's amazing how fast it will glue. And uh, as opposed to a super glue product, which I also use, your hands don't get all gunked up and everything else. So the next thing is glue sticks. And they come in all kinds of, uh, of manufacturers and stuff like that. Um, I have, this is Avery, and Avery has worked very well. I look for them when they're on sale or uh, as needed or go to Michael's and use my coupons and buy three or four of these at a time. Or you can buy them by, the, by 10 or 20 in boxes on Amazon, whatever works well for you. I found this, uh, this is about an inch diameter, which is nice when, uh, here, let's take a look. What is it? Yeah, it's about an inch diameter. So that's nice when you're doing like a, a larger surface, like a whole wall or something like that. This comes in handy when it's smaller. This comes in a recommendation by uh, Clever Models. It's Bob Smith's, and he repackages this, but it's, it's called the Gap Filling, and this is a medium glue. It's about, it sets up in five to 15 seconds. Two ounces cost you six, seven dollars of the, uh, I, I think it's called ACC or CAA, CAA material, uh, cyanoacrylate, CAA. Um, and this lasts a long time. I've had this a year and I still have a third of the bottle left. And use it sparingly. Uh, it sets up quickly, but I found too that you have to use it very sparingly on paper so it doesn't supersaturate the paper, it takes longer to dry. And also, it requires some pressure, and I will even blow on it and take, for, to hit that 15 minute period. Okay, the other thing that I've learned about, and this uh, is an industrial strength and it's an adhesive, and it's called E6000. Three or four dollars a tube. Um, I think you can even get this at Home Depot. You can get it at uh, most of the craft stores, Michaels, Hobby Lobbies, etc. cetera. It's, um, it looks like a little gel when it comes in, it's clear, it dries clear. Um, and it, it, you, I'll use a toothpick to, um, to, to apply it if I need to, if I don't wanna have it. I also will glue, uh, I'm putting my lights down, I'll glue this on the wires or I'll glue it even right behind the LED light, and it uh, really provides good adhesion. Doesn't take that long to set up. You can use a hair dryer if you want to to accelerate the, the drying process. The next thing we can talk about is how to fasten stuff. How do you, how do you position it? And I found these little uh, little clips are fantastic. I actually found this on it. A 50% off table at Duluth Trading, which is what you buy, you get your clothes at. And they had like 20 of them in a box for 10 bucks or something. Fantastic. They've got some real strength to them, uh, good pressure points. You just have to have the clearance to get in, as well as then these type of clips, plastic. Next in your arsenal, straight edges rulers. This one has a cork on the back. I also have one this size that doesn't have a cork in the back. I normally don't, it depends, but to, for accuracy, I always put this face down because if you have a cork in there and when you're cutting, it uh, doesn't. Then I'll, uh, I've got a small um, square. This is stuck for the moment, here we go. And this is, uh, even has a level in it that I've used sometimes, has some weight to it. This is an heirloom. This was used by my grandfather, my dad and grandfather, uh, at the Pennsylvania Railroad when they were working on stuff. So it's a real keepsake. And then I get all kinds of uh, small ones. Westcott seems to be a company where the lettering or the, uh, and the markings stay really well. Here's one that doesn't have a, 
any cork backing in this one does. And these are six inches, they come in real handy. What I found too is I like it when, as you can see here, this the measuring goes to the very end of the rule. A lot of them will have an eighth inch gap and uh, if you're gonna butt measure something up against it, then you can measure right from the surface. This is an awl. Um, I don't know if I got this at um, Amazon or wherever, but it, uh, as you can see, it's about three inches in length. It has, it's sizable, it's not real fine. I use this for, um, and uh, Ben, I think Ben Streeter is a fellow that uh, put together a how-to on, on the uh, crossing tower project that I learned that sometimes you'll need help when you're doing an inside corner. Right here, you see this corner, and you can put it, you put it on all four corners, just press it in with your hand. And definitely, you want to have a cutting mat. You do that on four corners, and then that will help you get, it tells you where to stop by the feel with your X-Acto knife. Also, if you're going to scour, to put a scouring line on something, this is great. You can scour it very easily, put a scour right there. That is where you'll find dotted lines, like this dotted line. And so that, to that dotted line, and before uh, cutting this piece out, you'll wanna, I put a, a punch hole there and a punch hole here, and then you flip it around and you need to scour it from the back side. Here's the lines, right here, the dots. So I can show this on, on here. Yeah. And then you'll just draw a scour. I usually do it about three times. You can also use the back edge, use the back edge of one of these uh, larger um, utility knives, like this, two, three. That will allow you to then fold the paper using, this is almost like a paper brake press with another one behind it to get a good fold on the paper. And when you're done with your wine, to save the cork, put it on here for safety purposes. Here, what is it? So, yeah, these are number 11s, and I'll show them to you. I like this as a, a, a Fisker. There's probably, uh, you get, veterans out there might even suggest to me what is, was a better knife to use. I like it because this is how it inserts the blade. Um, these are, uh, on Amazon, I think you can get like 120 of these for ten, twelve dollars and you can put them on uh, your uh, subscription list and get another ten or fifteen percent off. The spent blades I put in a small box like that. But so this is my workhorse exacto knife, for lack of better words. Clips in real easy, comes out. And I just sort of stumbled onto this one day. It works well. Another thing I use is these Fisker scissors. They're nice to get into tiny areas and stuff like that. Or let's say you've, you've put together a model and you've got to trim something off that's, that's glued that doesn't quite match, and that happens because I'm not a perfectionist. I think I am, but my results aren't there. Um, there's also various kind of blades. This was like a little chisel blade, as you can see. Comes in handy at times. I don't use it as much as I originally did because I've become much better even with freehanding on straight lines. Most of the time on the long straight lines I will use a ruler. Um, another thing that says is a little piece of, of sandpaper. And uh, I use this on some of my edges, um, different applications. Uh, also when I'm burning the wire, the insulation off of small wires for lighting. Um, after I scrape it, I'll take this and clean it off so I get good contact. Q-tips, a variety of things, especially 
uh, cleaning up little glue areas around uh, window frames and stuff like this. You can run along the edge of the frame uh, and it'll just clean up nicely for you. Forceps to helping you glue or hold things while you're maybe gluing. I'm not putting any pressure on that at all. And it comes in different sizes and shapes, even with uh, bent angles. And you can get these five or six in a set, depending upon the configuration. Um, I got these on Amazon, I think. And they come in different levels of cost and quality, but they're pretty reasonably priced. That helps out a lot, especially uh, in, because of the detail in these kits. You can uh, clamp onto um, a, a cutout that you want to glue and make it perpendicular to another surface that you're gluing it on as a detailed item. This will allow you to position it flat, register properly, you know, between what's on here you want to glue, let's say it's a rafter or something like that, onto the other piece of paper and five minutes or less, it's tacky enough that you can put it aside and go on to something else. In, term, in terms of scales, um, growing up I only had HO scale and that was back in the 50s. My dad and I had a 4x8 uh, layout and we used it in our basement. It was permanent um, and that's where I got exposed to trains a lot. However, there's all kinds of scales out there from the large to G scale down to now even Z. Um, and what's nice is there's, there's formulas in terms of what percentage you use in terms of printing something out. I use Photoshop a lot because I became comfortable with it in my uh, video business, uh, but many of you may not, and you may have to just ramp up the, the scaling of the production depending upon what's available to you or, or bring it down. But O scale seems to be pretty comfortable for me based upon the size and uh, the ratios because in O scale, a quarter of an inch equals a foot. And this, this is about a 3 16th inch fold right here. Right there, that's small. This, in comparison, is a quarter of an inch. And you can see there's a, a little bit of a difference there. Yeah, it's a quarter of an inch timber. And then, and then in real life, this would be a foot. So this would be a 12, 12 by 12 uh, timber. And this is all cardstock um, based upon uh, plans that were shared to me, you know, by uh, the Clever Brothers. And then I adapted them in Photoshop. A small pair of needle nose pliers is great to have. They talk about uh, a dental pick or burnishing tool um, that you can I have not got into using those yet. I talked a little about scoring the paper and then learn to fold it and stuff like that. So that pretty much covers um, this episode of tools. Then what I'm going to do is uh, take one of my projects that I put together and share some things with you that I've learned in doing it and uh, um, and see if that can help you. I'd love to welcome feedback. I'm looking at probably posting this on on YouTube and also probably uh, creating a Facebook page uh, slash location or group that you know people can participate, put their pictures, videos up, um, and it provide comments. And uh, believe me, I'm very receptive to constructive criticism. The first thing, the first rule in this is to have fun. And if I'm talking a little too serious and it's because I'm passionate about it and enjoy it, and I also have to keep it in balance in my life and not want to just do this 24-7 every day. But I'm grateful to the people that have developed this technology and skill, taken technologies, I should say, and, uh, and created um, an offshoot of modeling for railroads using cardstock. It's amazing, you know, the, 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 the printer in everybody's home, I think, has revolutionized many things about 
how we live today. And this is just one small aspect of how you can print something out. It's a weathered building, it's a detailed building, and through, through um, tutorials by uh, clever models and a lot of other people, um, it shows you how can, you can create a depth look by layering it. And so it doesn't just look like a flat uh, piece of printed paper without any depth perception to it. It's amazing in the detailing. This is a project um, that's a crossing tower. This is O scale. And I'll put a ruler up here. As you can see, it's about, oh, about four inches to the peak, something like that right there. And this is all cardstock. Ben Streeter has done an excellent PDF with photographs and explanation of, of how you can take one of Clever Models. This is a Clever Models project. And I think it's a freebie even. They, they believe, done all this detail. And I haven't even put any lights in this one. But you can see you do layering on the roofs. You can see the layering here uh, of the, uh, the trim, the outside trim, the steps. I mean, this is my first, and this, these steps look rickety. Maybe that's what they were like in real life. But it's amazing what you can do. Be patient. And as a fellow that is a number of years my senior and has been doing this for 20 years or more, railroad modeling, he says it's the journey that's what it's all about. Because... It seems like I no longer finish one project, uh, meaning a, uh, doing a kit or a building, whatever, as I want to do the next one. And it's like birthing a child. You sort of hate to let go of it, but at the same time, you look back and say, well, man, you know, instead of being just a couch potato, um, I was able to create something. That's pretty interesting. And you can see the disc the trim on the doors, the, uh, the hinges everything else. So we're going to get into it. Thanks for your patience. Welcome feedback. Uh, this is an inauguration of uh, something I've been wanting to share because I'm so grateful for all the help that I've gotten along the way, um, especially from uh, Dave and Tom at uh, Clever Models, but a number of people. There's uh, people over in uh, the UK. Uh, it's amazing where you can find resources that created cardstock and down the road hopefully I'll be able to create some things that other people can enjoy through the uh, hope for guidance from uh, Dave and Tom at Clever Models. Have fun out there sports fans. Thanks a lot.